Next up, Mary visits a family in Victoria who are building a sustainable home out of straw, sand and clay. On three hectares of land outside of Victoria, British Columbia, an eco-political experiment is underway. Can you build a sustainable, affordable home that, and here's the kicker, meets code? Well, after a month of wall building, our walls are halfway up. Gord and Anne Baird, along with Anne's parents, are giving it a run for their money. They want to construct the first fully engineered, load-bearing, code-approved cob house in North America. <laughs> Basically, you're not impacting future generations, either future generations of humans or future generations of animals and critters that you share the property with. So not only will the house be of natural materials, but also our systems will all be sustainable, such as the rainwater harvesting, the solar heating. The Barretts have become master dumpster divers in their zeal to use recycled materials. Their lumber is from an old bowling alley, their doors are recycled firewood, and this archway is a piece of driftwood they found on the beach. I love the natural curve at the top of the door. Beautiful. The cob mixture comes from local materials and is based on the Baird's own recipe of pumice, sand, clay, and straw. Pumice is an innovation that adds insulation. True to their philosophy, even the straw is recycled. Now you can uh, chop straw in a chipper and it makes a huge amount of noise and it's just a horrible experience and it's not a very good product because of lots of lumps in it. Uh, the best way to have chopped straw is to put it through a horse. <laughs> Human beings have been using horse manure for centuries so it's nothing new and, uh, and it works extremely well in the plaster. That's what this is here. And there's absolutely no smell. Recycling is a fantastic thing. You really find the treasures when you do that. <laughs> Actually, in fact, both Gord and myself are also recycled. We uh, had prior marriages where we were uh, tossed out and we scooped each other up pretty quick. Uh oh! <laughs> <laughs> you might say that the Bairds are the millennium version of the 60s Back to the Landers. Who needs the gym membership? They met and fell in love online while Anne was living off the grid in the Gulf Islands. It quickly became apparent that it was a match made in heaven, but grounded on Earth. When I met Anne, I wanted a gal that could carry her own kayak, clean her own fish, and could wear gum boots. And she is all of that in this pretty little bundle. And she's got an amazing mind, and she's got an amazing passion for nature. And, and she's taught me a tremendous amount. We can probably work on our system where I'm making it and you're spreading it and wheeling it. Yeah, I think that would work out quite well. Gord is an amazing man. We, we got married after uh, knowing each other six months. We were engaged after three months. And uh, he's the most amazing man I ever met. You saw all the curves and the idea was that the curves followed the bedrock. So what we have here is we have the bedrock. I met the Bairds at the beginning of construction, back when the house was just a twinkle in their eyes. Is this your main entrance? This is actually not our main entrance. This is actually um, an entrance coming into the front of our living side, but our main entrance is going to be around the side. And look at the view. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's beautiful. It's spectacular. It's an awesome location to build a passive solar house because it has full sun even right in the winter. It's roughly the scale. It's quite curved because what it does is it follows the contours of the bedrock. So rather than building a house and making the landscape fit the house, what we've done is we've designed the house to fit the, the landscape. Hey, Emily, you missed a whole bunch over here. Oh, 
this type of earthen building empowers the average person to be able to build their own house. You don't need all those specialized skills. You still need an, ele an electrician and a plumber to help you out with some of the more difficult things, but the majority of it can be done a handful at a time, and it's very empowering. <laughs> the Barrett's home will be powered by the sun and the wind with a state-of-the-art grid tie-in system with BC Hydro. Solar water heating tubes will provide hot water and in-floor heating. Is this where my hot tub's gonna be? This, <laughs> actually this is where our drinking water is. So what we have is off our living roof, and as you can see, coming off the eaves that we have here, this is where our 4,000 gallons of rainwater storage is. These tanks will catch rainwater, which they'll use for cooking, drinking, and washing. Gray water will provide irrigation for an orchard. Okay, I'm here. Uh... <laughs> is this an important feature of your home? Absolutely. This was the uh, pipe for the uh, flush toilet that we have to put in <laughs> that we're never going to be using. We had to put in a uh, $30,000 septic system to accommodate a flush toilet for a toilet that we won't use because we use a composting toilet. So uh, our composting toilet is $300 versus a $30,000 system that we're not going to use. So that's, that's silly and that's a challenge and that's hard to swallow. The cost comes in under $120 a square foot, which is substantially less than the average for new home construction. Despite the occasional frustration with bureaucracy, constructing the home to code has been a source of fulfillment for the Bairds. They hope it will eventually serve as an educational model for others. <coughs> So what's holding you up right now? Oh, there's lots of little bits and pieces for the, the special... I return almost a year later to celebrate the almost finished product of their passion and labors. Ooh, here we wow, are. it's looking great. Well, thank you. I love the kitchen. It's, it's a dream kitchen, absolutely. Made out of recycled materials for the most part. And Gord has done an amazing job, his first kitchen. And, uh, it's very rewarding because we get a huge amount of positive feedback from our community and our friends and we've met so many like-minded people through this that our, our lives feel so much richer because we've connected with many people that think the way we do and appreciate what it is we're trying to do here. I am doing most of this for my children, absolutely. I think it's important for them to think, but I want them to have skills and I want them to see what's possible. Congratulations. You're here. You're here. <laughs>